In this article from a large group of authors led by Dr. Margarita Revzin from Yale University School of Medicine, the authors begin with a review of basic ultrasound physics principles as they relate to Doppler ultrasonography. The three acquisition modes utilized in Doppler ultrasound imaging include color, spectral, and power Doppler imaging. Table two reviews the advantages and limitations of each. Color Doppler allows for simultaneous grayscale imaging and assessment of vascular hemodynamics, while spectral Doppler provides quantitative measurement of the velocities of flow within a sample volume. Power Doppler provides the strength or amplitude of the Doppler signal, is more sensitive to low flow states, and allows for global organ or tissue assessment. The next section of the article addresses image optimization which can be universally applied to any organ or vascular bed interrogated. The first issue is distinguishing poor from absent flow. Table 3 and Movie 1 review this process. Vascular Doppler parameters on color display. Color Doppler video of the main renal artery demonstrates different grayscale and Doppler settings that can be determined from the image. On the right upper corner, there is a display of the chosen preset for the evaluation of abdominal vasculature. Transducer choice and the frame rate are listed below the application. On the left upper corner, there is a display of the output power selected for the Doppler evaluation. Note that the output energy differs depending on the application that is utilized. Much less power will be applied to an obstetrical application. The range of the velocity scale can also be determined from the color bar. 2D settings include gain and dynamic rate, Color Doppler settings demonstrate gain in percentage saturation and wall filter. Power Doppler settings are not shown on this image, however also would display gain in percentage saturation and wall filter. Focal zone and depth are also displayed on the image. On color Doppler imaging, difficulty in distinguishing poor from absent flow may result from low gain settings. Increasing the gain setting until color is visible outside the boundaries of the vessel and then decreasing gain until all the color specks outside the vessel wall disappear ensures proper adjustment. Other issues include a high wall filter setting resulting in loss of diastolic flow. Low filter settings can ensure display of low amplitude velocities. Similarly, if the velocity scale is set too high, slow flow may not be detected on color or spectral Doppler. Artifactual absence of flow can be seen when the angle of incination of the ultrasound beam to the vessel is at 90 degrees. Remember that the Doppler frequency shift equation includes the cosine of the angle between the beam and vessel and that the cosine of 90 degrees is zero. Choosing a transducer of appropriate low frequency allows for adequate assessment of deep vessels. Similarly, Deep positioning or too small of a color box can have a negative effect on blood flow detection. Some innovative vascular ultrasound techniques for the detection of flow include B flow, microflow imaging, superb microvascular imaging, and of course contrast enhanced ultrasound. Figures 11 and 12 and movie 8 illustrate some of these techniques ulcerated internal carotid artery plaque. B-flow imaging of the left internal carotid artery demonstrates intermittent blood flow within a small ulceration of the soft plaque. Dissection is also noted at the site of the internal carotid artery. This was not seen on color Doppler imaging due to blooming artifact and low sensitivity to slow flow. Excessive color flow on color Doppler imaging may be due to one or more factors. Too high gain settings and associated blooming artifacts can be avoided by adjusting gain settings as detailed previously, and this will avoid obscuration of vascular flaps, atherosclerotic plaque, and thrombus. Flash artifact inadvertently measures frequency chains due to motion, such as from the diaphragm, bowel, or movement of the transducer itself. Excessive flow signal due to perivascular tissue vibration from high velocity jets as seen in stenosis or fistula formation is known as the tissue brewery artifact. The article then discusses aliasing, 
which is a multicolored heterogeneous color display due to a disturbed flow pattern. Several Doppler parameters may require adjustment, as detailed in Figure 16. The article provides a detailed explanation of the physics underlying aliasing. The authors point out that when aliasing is associated with a true blood flow disturbance, it allows the operator to quickly localize the area of highest velocity and thereby identify areas of stenosis or high velocity flow abnormalities such as arterial venous fistulas. Flow direction ambiguity may be due to aliasing, positioning of the color and spectral baseline too high or too low, variable positioning of the transducer relative to the vessel under investigation, and other factors that the authors review. An artifact related to flow ambiguity is crosstalk or mirror image pattern seen when the ultrasound beam intersects the vessel at approximately 90 degrees. Spectral broadening, as illustrated in figure 23, reflects flow disturbance due to stenosis, but may also be due to technical factors in the absence of vascular obstruction. Finally, there are instances when vascular flow is falsely demonstrated when none is present. Table 5 reviews these artifacts that include mirror image artifact, twinkling artifact, pseudoflow due to motion within a fluid, edge artifact, and beam width artifact. The article and the accompanying commentary by Dr. John Pellerito can be found at the following link.